Need for Speed Unbound is the franchise's 25th mainline installment since the very first game was released in 1994, and that experience clearly resides in its core racing gameplay. Every run is fluid from start to finish, but sadly most of Need for Speed Unbound doesn't feel as polished as its base game. Need for Speed Unbound takes place in the fictional town of Lakeshore, where the mayor and local police try to stop illegal street racing ahead of the election. A big-budget racing event is held that takes players through four weeks and four major multi-race events, three qualifiers and the Lakeshore Grand. Players must race day and night every day of these four-week periods to earn enough money to buy and build their cars to perfection. Only a few are the need for a need for speed for a good story, but the story of the impregnated NFS is perhaps the most generic of recent years. He entered the outstanding racing pilot trope, repeats the same action and does not feel personally. Instead, history indicates how money and persecution are secondary to respect respect, honor and family, but players are constantly pursuing money, even if they are supposed to finance. If you ignore this, fans have been able to take advantage of some of the best nuclear games in the franchise so far. Players can improve their cars with a number of levels with various upgrades for each part of the engine. When players push their limits, they can even replace their entire block and unlock new upgrades to boost it even further. The substance in these upgrades is there, as is the style. Each piece of a vehicle comes with a host of customizable body parts, including full fender removal, and painting and foiling ensure fans can express themselves properly. Oddly enough, however, the driving effects and need for speed unbound feel like little add-ons rather than a major customization option, which is odd considering how heavily marketed they have been. Each car drives and feels different in Need for Speed Unbound, and the ability to tune the vehicles is second to none. Players are able to adjust how well their car drifts or how tightly it manages turns, using that to their advantage in every race. A lot of Need for Speed games drop any real challenge, making it easy for even the most novice player to come in first constantly. That's not the case here. To match how smooth driving a car feels, Need for Speed Unbound makes sure players are constantly challenged. One wreck, one misstep, or one miscalculation will easily see players chasing the pack instead of leading it. Unfortunately, despite how beautiful the game is from moment to moment, this one is severely undermined at every turn. Race types in Need for Speed Unbound are bland, with players spending 90% of their time in sprints or circuit races. What's worse is that players see repeat cards before they've even completed the first week. Races are sometimes modified with modifiers like large sums, low risk, high risk, heat levels required, and so on, but each level has a handful of races and nothing more. There are a number of head-to-head -head events, car deliveries, drift events and the new Need for Speed Unbound takeover mode, but there are no traditional eliminators outside the qualifiers. No drag racing, no big off-road events, no real-time attacks, or anything innovative. Players will also have to deal with the police on a regular regular basis, but that feels like a performative feature rather than something profound. It looks promising at first as Need for Speed Unbound pits players against different police vehicles based on heat level which it says players should handle so different, but it's not really necessary. The result of this approach is a small handful of vehicles chasing the player, rather than epic police chases that require quick decision making, similar to the old games, and these are easy to escape. The artificial intelligence of these police vehicles is questionable at best. During chases, they will say they are going to hit or ram the player, but then never do. They'll be handing out trip spikes, but this is so telegraphed and often out of place that they're easier to avoid than any other game in the franchise to date. When players encounter cops in Need for Speed Unbound's open world, they can overtake them at unreasonable speeds, crash into three or four other vehicles, and perform a plethora of illegal actions, but as long as players don't or not directly in front of them and do not touch them, the police AI will not interact. Even if they start spotting the player, it's easy to dodge them. The AI is almost fun to play but undermines any artificial threat it creates. For example, if a Need for Speed Unbound player goes bankrupt, they lose all the money they did not deposit by ending the day or night. However, getting caught by the police is a lot harder than escaping them, and it's unfortunately something players want to do from time to time. The four-week day and night cycle feels like a lot of padding, especially since players have tricked out vehicles and will be rolling in the dough by the end of week three. There are races where players can unlock cars, so that's encouraging, but sometimes they start a game session where there are only races with small cash rewards. Players will leave their garage and find that as they progress, there will be fewer interesting non-repeating races, hoping to advance. That being said, the generic Lakeshore setting in Need for Speed Unbound ensures that nothing further motivates players to get to the next race. There are only one or two set pieces that stand out from the rest. There's also no fast travel feature, even for players who simply return to an unlocked safe house, and this is likely due to the fact that players could theoretically get caught at any moment. 
Furthermore, these activities lack any real depth and only feel like a performative function rather than a fully developed central aspect of the gameplay. Had the rest of Need for Speed Unbound been given the same polish as the core gameplay, it would have been a very different story. But there isn't much here for players beyond the next race. Need for Speed Unbound also has an online mode, where the difficulty increases as players compete against real people. There are full race playlists where players can compete against each other, and the server size is perfect for ensuring that the races are constantly running. This is where the intense gameplay comes into its own. The problem is that it is presented exactly like the story mode, which means that everything is wrong with Lakeshore, and the general design of NFS Unbound is evident here too. It's impossible to predict the future, but unless heavily supported by a plethora of updated content, NFS Unbound's online mode will likely fade into obscurity. As a result, Need for Speed Unbound feels like it stops before it starts. The end of the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay can't be ignored. But overall, Need for Speed Unbound is just another forgettable entry in the long-running franchise. Need for Speed Unbound is available now for PC, PS5 and Xbox Series X. Our rating, 2.5 out of 5. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and support my channel.